Hey everybody, welcome back to the Live Ultralight Podcast. We recently just came off a trail and I thought it'd be a great time to pick the brain of Peter Reese from Investment Grade Gear. Now, Peter, you've had a life in the outdoors. Why don't you give a brief synopsis to our listeners of you know your background and then we'll talk about what the purpose is of Investment Grade Gear because I think we have a lot in alignment there. Jason, it's great to be with you today and Outdoor Vitals, appreciate the opportunity to really help people get down the road maybe a little bit better. In fact. That's been really the outgrowth of my experience in the outdoors, which started out as a participant at a young age, but also then being a guide, a Nordic ski athlete and coach, uh, selling retail gear, being involved with the marketing and sales of gear, working internationally with really challenged people in that regard, working in rural America. And in all cases, I was working in situations where you didn't always have access to everything you needed all the time. And the choices you made about how you went into that day, not just emotionally and with your goals, but also what you were wearing and carrying, really made a difference in all those settings. Yeah, so, I mean, that's really made you become someone, somewhat of a, I don't know, gear junkie per se, where you just really care what the gear is. You're, you're very uh, purposeful in your selections, but that's that's fueled by what? Experience? It's fueled by experience. It's also, you know, working in this industry, outdoor industry for some time, as director of content, seeing a lot of different gear tastes. And, but what, what's behind that, in front of that, are the people that are wearing it and using it and traveling with it. And I was able to experience a lot of gear failures <laughs> and a lot of poor gear decisions as part of what I was doing without the consequences. But I have, and other people I've met, have experienced consequences of poor choices, not just of what they brought, but how they used it, and in a lot of cases, what they didn't bring. Yeah. So can you think back maybe to a time when you've been using gear and had these failures or had these moments where it didn't work out and, and did that, did that change how you move forward from there? It, it did. And personally experiencing it, uh, one trip solo trekking in Patagonia, I know solo trekking is, mm-hmm. and, and fast packing is really important to the spirit of outdoor vitals. Um, I had a tent that I had used for some time. I loved the tent. But the wind speed, the average wind speed in Patagonia is 40 miles an hour. And my tent poles were not able to handle that. And literally one night they exploded, they shattered. (laughs) And so I'm scrambling in the rocks trying to find ways of holding my tent up. And I've seen those kind of experiences, not just in my life, but other people's lives. And so I'm really, really convicted that what we carry and what we bring is important to us. It's even true day to day. I've seen people just in their work situation where they didn't have a good battery charger. They didn't have what they needed from the technology point of view. Well, that, that kind of matters, but when you're in the back country or I was working internationally in really tough situations that people might remember Nicaragua, the Contras and the Sandinistas. Nicaragua is not a very stable place. That was one of the places that I was working to try and bring people together. It's rainy there, it's muddy there. So if you're standing and you're freezing, your feet are freezing in the mud, you're slipping around, you're cold, really hard to focus of being a service, but also just of maintaining your awareness and being safe. So, so go, even jumping back to this Patagonia experience, right? You're, you're saying you're, you're experiencing these, these massive winds, you're, you're out there on trail and, and just crazy windy conditions. Um, you know, some people might hear something like that and think, oh, maybe I don't need to experience that, right? Or, or but, but at the same time, it seems like when you talk about it, it was important to you. Like you, you ended up enjoying this trip regardless of, of, or at least it's been a pivotal point for you in your life, right? So um, when you think of that, like what did you walk away from the trip? Like what, what changed for you when you walked away from that specific trip? Well, and I, had, I had other challenges of the solo travel, uh, Patagonia, that we see these big mountains we, we think it's this beautiful alpine place, but also there's a lot of bogs and swamps around those mountains. And so I have, was able to experience those personally. And what I discovered in those experiences, Taysom, was that I had to make wise choices about where I went and I had to be equipped for where I went. But also in this Patagonia trip, I realized I had made some pretty good choices beyond my pack that let me travel with a lot of freedom and a lot of lightness. So I learned the right stuff that's durable, that's functional across weather conditions that you can rely on. That was a big lesson. That was very freeing for me. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, I think I think it's interesting though that even with, you know, I think I think people sometimes get caught up, and again, this is I think this is something we share is both me and Peter having discussions off uh, off the air here have you know it's very important for us to help new people get out on trail and experience things, and I think one of the things that that comes to people's mind is when they have a gear failure moment that you know like that's the end like it's like the worst has mm-hmm. come right. Um, obviously in your scenario, you were basically without a shelter. I, uh, you know, last winter I had a pad issue where I was using a, a prototype pad and, um, it had been damaged by, by the previous person to touch this pad. And, um, I didn't know. And so I was skiing out at midnight, you know, in the snow. Uh, and, and the interesting thing though, is that wasn't the end of the road. Was it? No, it was like you continued to go outside and you continued and that, that experience was still, I imagine a good experience overall, right? Well, it was, a, it was extraordinary. And so I think also we need to realize that things will happen, but to the extent we plan and our entire approach to our gear and equipment is a solid one. If we have an unforeseen failure of, let's just say, 10% of our equipment, 10% of our gear, if we're dry and we're warm and we've got something to eat and some water, we can make do in a lot of settings. And I think that's where, you know, not to be too promotional about outdoor vitals, but I'm seeing for even some of the insulated shells that I've been trying, they've got some weather protection attached to them beyond what you might expect. There's a case where, well, well, what if I had to give somebody my Tusher jacket, I'd be okay. So if we make good choices, we've got the ability to absorb some change in weather, some failure. And then the other part that I've discovered and being a wilderness first responder is we got to be ready to help other people. So if you make wise choices and you're taking care of yourself, even if there's a failure, you can self recover, but you can help somebody else too. Yeah. I think that you can always um, reduce the amount of risk out there by better planning, but also the more confidence you have in your gear, whether that's um, from your own experience, which hopefully it is, it's the more you get out, the more confidence you build and the better off you're going to be as you head into the backcountry. Uh, but it can also just be with, with your selection of product, which is something that you are trying to help people with now, right? Is, is to understand what product, you know, really is that important and what allows it to, you know, get your badge of, of you know what, this is tried and proven gear. This is something you can have confidence in. And so that as you get into the backcountry, you know, I always say that mother nature is, is the great equalizer. It's always going to humble you as well. Yes. Um, there's nothing you can do to, to, to slow down the winds or the storms or things like that that can sometimes happen, especially when you get into situations like high altitude or Patagonia, you know, it, it is these different types of things. And so being able to have that confidence in gear is really important. And like I say, you can develop that in a couple of ways. First, what I think most people should try to do is to continue to build their own confidence and skill levels. And second is to have trusted resources, which is what you're building with Absolutely. investment grade gear. Investment grade gear and giving, giving, individual pieces of gear, the made the grade, investment grade made the grade, Mm -hmm. giving them that, tasting that kind of uh, symbol, icon, stamp of approval, because it's really a matter of a few of the right things rather than a lot of the wrong things. And so a lot of the gear I'm reviewing is actually gear that I have carried. There's a pair of boots that I wore doing international development work in war zones, conflict zones, and tough situations. I've worn these boots uh, in various iterations, but really the same series of boots for 30 years. And so that's an experience, that's an extraordinary experience. The same with a lot of the um, everyday carry lights and knives and things, but other people haven't been fortunate and live long enough to have those experiences to know that. And so I wanna be able to translate the chance that I've had in the outdoors in a lot of settings we talked about, and then also testing thousands of pieces of gear that you don't have to do that. That's something that you can rely upon, but it really is a matter of individual pieces of gear that give you some bandwidth. And that's one of the other things, Tayson, is give people a little bit of margin with each piece of gear rather than saying, the temperature changed by three degrees, I have the wrong jacket. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think that's really, really, really substantially important. When when you look at your life, right, and, and all your experiences, and then you go to grade something, what is it to you that becomes the most important? Do you have a, a priority list of it? It needs to be able to do these things. What what ranks highest? You know, obviously different types of gear, I'm sure it can rank a little bit different, but in your mind, how are you looking and approaching how you would rank a product in 
I'm looking for gear other than specialist gear. So if you're talking about ice climbing, that's very, we don't really focus on that. I want something tasting that's going to have some margin in the temperature and weather range it can absorb. We're talking about apparel and even footwear, a lot of things. So I want something that isn't so fussy mm -hmm. that you've got to operate in a small margin. I want something. Is that, does that relate to say durability or does that well, relate that's to? Well, that's another factor, okay. right? So it's, it's suitability, like you go on a trip with friends to the mountains, the weather changes, it starts to sleet. You're not saying, oh no, I don't have a jacket that's gonna keep me warm and protected. The jacket I wore in the sun has got some ability to maybe repel a little bit of moisture, handle a little bit of wind. So really that ability to live across conditions, yeah. across seasons, across terrain, other than special gear, that's very important to me. You also mentioned durability. The number of cycles it can go through because I'm encouraging people to wear and to use what they buy. Radical idea. <laughs> I want them to get out there and use it. And so that means it's gotta it's gotta last across there. And it also has to be maintainable. So if there's if there are seams that are double and triple, that's great. But if I can get in there and fix it, if I can put a new coating, if it needs a new coating, if I can clean it up so that the water, you know, waterproofness factors work. I want people to be able to take care of their stuff instead of saying, oh no, I got to send it back to somebody. So durability, it's ability to work in a variety of environments so that, you know, when you take, let's say it's a down jacket into this environment versus this environment, you've got more trust in its yes, ability to cross absolutely. those those barriers, right? Um, any other factors that, that are important in gear selection to you? Well, the ultimate price, the lowest price is not important to me. Why is that? That's, it, that's backwards in a lot of people's it's minds, backwards, right? a lot of it. If there happens to be this collision between a very low price and all the factors that go into made the grade, that's great. But I'm not counting on that. I'm counting on getting something that is going to be functional and enjoyable across seasons and years. And that's where value really occurs. Okay. So does that mean you're going to select the $1,000 tent as what makes the grade, right? Like what, what, what do you say to that? When, when you're looking at some of these products that can, that can be, I'll call them extremist or, but, but it's really for the, you know, the top percent of passionist people in this. So does that mean that that's going to be the product that gets selected if, if you just pull price out of the equation? You know, it's funny, it's funny because you reach a point of diminishing return is what I'd say, Tayson. Mm -hmm. And normally that's in the middle, middle high price point, but not the ultra high not the exclusive. So it's more in that middle kind of price range versus just being the value price. Normally you spend beyond it and you don't really get the benefits that I'm talking about to any substantial degree. What would you say to someone who's, who's just getting started in backpacking? Um, you know, and they, they do have a bit of a budget, but they're not trying to cut every corner. What do you feel like is one of the most important pieces of gear um, for them to maybe maybe spend a little bit more money on or you know if they're going to you know not cut a corner somewhere where do you think is, is the biggest thing okay. for their buck I want people to be comfortable and stay warm and dry and so the right kind of rain jacket or shell that can take you across seasons really okay. important even in I live in the desert much of the year and even there the winds come up you can get some rain it can be very chilling because you can go to altitude pretty quickly so something that repels some wind and some rain, take that. That's something you take through life. An insulating layer that can absorb even being out in some wind and rain. So start with those kinds of pieces that will keep you warm and dry across seasons, across temperature zones, across activities. And then also in terms of apparel, like the pants I've got on that are from Outdoor Vitals, same kind of thing across temperature zones, sun protection, it's got some storage. So start with what's on your body okay. first, because that's your first shelter. And now I can rely on it, even if things change. Start there. If I'm carrying a load, now I want load management. I want to be comfortable. I want to be able to go with some freedom. So a lighter weight pack, don't go to the Army Navy store and say, they, you know, they carried this in Australia 50 years ago, and it's made out of aluminum that weighs as much as a bicycle. So then start with how can I free myself up to, to travel with a sense of lightness. So then I'd say pack frame is really important because that's going to transition no matter where you go and how long you go. 
start with what's on your body and then build from there. I think that's, that's an interesting perspective. Um, I think in my mind when I was asking that question, I was thinking back to a time when we were um, in the Uinta wilderness. We basically were getting snowed out in August and we weren't, we weren't wearing the apparel per se that was suited for that environment. And so for us, you know, the most important thing was falling back to our shelters and our sleep systems, right? We basically had to get to a point where we sheltered in place. But the truth of the matter is, if the shelter had failed, we could have potentially hiked kind of through the night and got to lower elevation and got out of that situation, uh, which where is where it comes back to what, what's on your body, right? What's on your body is, is of, of primacy. And then building from there, and I'm, I'm not disagreeing with the importance of shelter mm -hmm. that again, can take you through those variable conditions. You know, what I've seen too is like somebody goes out in a group, they end up with like one shelter that everybody ends up in. <laughs> that's the one that everybody should have been using. And so I also look at it and say, do I have a shelter that even in the middle of the day, things get, things get tough and I've got a shelter. And even if I've got to pile a bunch of people in there to warm up during the day, they have a different philosophy in Europe and especially in the UK. And that is they stop during the day and they get warm, they raise their body temperature up and they dry out a little bit instead of killing themselves and getting soaked during the day and then ending up cold in a tent. So I would also say if anybody in the group and had a great experience with outdoor vitals on this trip, if you even have one person in the group that had one of the tents and things went bad, if you had to, you had to, you could get into that thing and somebody wasn't dressed and you could stay warm and make it through. Yeah. So at least one person's got to have the right gear. But and I want you, and I want the people watching that to be that person, to not hope that somebody brought a good tent brought a warm sleeping bag because what they've got weighs eight pounds and it's a, and it doesn't insulate. Be that person yeah. that is prepared for you, but also to help others. I think, I think what's interesting about this is at Outer Vitals, we do say like we design for performance and performance could mean different things to different people. But to us, what it means is a lot of field time and is it performing in a variety of conditions um, where I think a lot of people can get off track is focusing as like let's say it's just weight as the primary driver or maybe it's durability as the primary driver or maybe it's i think if you if you don't have a balanced approach what ends up happening is you don't have a piece of gear that can work in all situations so again let's just say it's it's if we had 100 percent focus on just weight um, some of our gear pieces would absolutely be different. This jacket you're wearing right. would be a seven in your face fabric. And then what happens when you scrape it through a bush or, right. or you get it caught in a zipper? Exactly. Or what if it's, you know, the 40s tent? You know, there there are shelters out there that drop clear down to, say, a seven in your nylon. And is that going to, you know, protect in those situations? And so I think if you if you get too focused and imbalanced on prioritizing one one aspect of gear... Um, you know, you start to fall backwards, which again, for us, what, what we've termed this as is just performance and performance right. to us is a lot of time in the field and a lot of different conditions. And does it do the job? Does it protect, you know, does it, does it, um, work as intended for the pieces desired intent? And, and, uh, it's not as easy as just slapping, slapping on a quick, easy, does it hit the weight mark? Does it hit this mark? Does it hit this mark? No, you know because, what I mean? Because, because that's where time it takes, right? You've got to have margin. And that's where I think the experience I've having so far with the gear is there's some margin in it. And that's what we're talking about across weather conditions, but performance, you can't operate in this environment where I've got to have two hands and zip the jacket perfectly because it really is lighter than it eh, probably should be unless I zip it this way and properly. You've got to have some margin. And that's true not only in your outdoor life, but your regular life. And that's also, we talk about the financial part you don't want to spend everything you have. You want to have some margin in there. If you're a photographer, to maybe buy a different lens, replace a battery. Don't, Any more to pay for gas. Or to pay, to pay for gas. To go. So, so having gear that's got some margin, that's performance in my mind, not the ultimate how fast, how light can everything go. That, has no, that usually has no margin. A good friend of mine I wrote a book with, he's a polar explorer. You want to talk about margin? He's yeah. got to be ready for minus 50, winds plus 50, wind chill, 100 below. 
He's got to be prepared for the sun to come out. What happens if the sun to come out? He could overheat. You can dehydrate very rapidly in a cold weather environment. So he builds his kit around a sense of expected conditions, but let's have a little margin. And that's, I think, what performance really captures. Yeah, I, 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 and I, so going into this aspect of, of just how important gear can be and how empowering gear can be, um, what have you found as far as once you have pieces of gear um, that you are confident in, has that changed anything for you? Um, so for instance, as maybe, I mean, you've been in the outdoors so long, it's probably hard to, to understand this, but if you were to relate to, you know, someone who's new coming in, they start acquiring this gear, um, and let's say they go and have some really successful trips. Have you noticed any kind of perspective shifts or any kind of changes in your life that you're, that you may look at someone else and just be like, you know, they're missing out on this or they don't understand this. And, you know, does, does any of this really matter? You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, it's, it's what happens, Jason, is if you're not equipped properly, your focus naturally should go to taking care of yourself. And so what happens is you pull inward. Now I'm not seeing what's around me. I came to this incredible place. I mean, there's some Utah for people who haven't been here. It's, I don't know, the trouble is where do you start? Because you could spend your whole life here exploring. But what happens is the wrong gear, you start to focus in on yourself and staying warm and staying dry, staying on the trail, trying to get a little bit of sleep. You stop seeing where you are. You stop seeing who you're with. You stop seeing all of the beauty around you and you stop experiencing anything but trying to get through that experience. And it's kind of like, well, why did I even go here? Why did I even make the trip? Why did I spend the money? Why did I burn the gas to get here? If you want to focus on out, the outward experience, the people around you, the new friends, the food along the way, all of it, you've got to have gear that lets you, it really gives you that freedom to look out and not be forced in. Yeah, and I think, I think as you say that, it makes me just think of the trip we were just on. Um, so we were backpacking in the backcountry of Zion, and uh, one of our team members went to get the permits, and the park ranger saying, do you know what the weather, have you looked at the weather? Looked at the weather. Do you know what you're doing? Are you sure you want to go out there? This seems like a bad idea, you know, all these things. And and he's, you know, he's saying, yes, we get it, we understand it, because we have this confidence in the gear. And then we go out on trail, and who did we see? Nobody, right? I mean, there's nobody out there until we were almost back to the car. Um, we were, we had Zions to ourselves. To ourselves. Right? I mean, it was, it was absolutely amazing. And we got to see things that many people don't, which is, well, we got, to, we got to play around in the rain a little bit. We got to hunker down under a tarp and, you know, laugh and play games under a tarp. And then, but, but the next morning you look up and you're seeing red rocks, you're seeing snow, you're seeing the sunshine, you know, off and on throughout the day. But it was, it was something you couldn't see unless you could have the confidence to put yourself in those scenarios. And um, to me, I think that's where some of this empowerment comes in um, that, that, that the gear provides. It's not just, it's not just you know, where your focus, it, it definitely is where your focus is on trail. You know, are you just, do you have anxiety? Are you fearful right. on the trail to, to be present? But it's also, is it going to keep you from going, period, right? Like, if, if, if you're just focused on a go and let's just go back to 100% weight, you know, you might look at your, your kit, which you've built out and say, in these conditions, I don't have confidence and I'm not going to go at all. And then you don't get to see the things that we were able to see. That's right. Well, and also if you are so unmarginal, then you can't take along, you know, some, a board game or something you want or an extra lantern to set up for the group to spend time. Everybody then just kind of becomes cocooned at night. It's going to be long nights. <laughs> it's going to be long nights with everybody just because they're just at such the margin. The other thing that happens is that everybody wakes up and they're warm and they're dry and they're ready for the day. Our group, a bunch of people went off for a side trip before we even went on the main trip of the day. Well, if you're fighting against those margins, you're going to be like, no, I get up. I'm going to be cold. I got to get going. I got to pack up. I got to move. There is no time to linger over a cup of cocoa, to take a side trip, to have a laugh, to spend time with each other. All of a sudden it becomes grim. And that's the problem of ultra anything. People are too focused on the gear, the performance, what they want to think is performance. 
extracting every little performance element out of it, they don't experience what's there to experience. And I don't want that for anybody, Tiz. I want them to have made the grade gear. But one of the things I didn't say is I didn't say it has to be the lightest in its category, did I? Mm. It's a category for made the grade. Yeah. Well, I think this is this is very insightful. Um, if, if you were to, you know, step on the other side of this microphone and, and be able to talk to a first time backpacker, um, specifically about gear choices, is there anything that, that, that we haven't touched on that you feel like is critical or, or can just help them? The, what's, what's surprising to me, the more I do this is the convergence between active pursuits and life. So for example, if I've got the right insulating layer, light insulating layer, the right rain shell, wind shell, you know what? I'm going to wear that in my life. So when they're investing in backpacking gear, if they, if they buy the right gear, a lot, especially when I'm talking about the apparel side of things, you can spend a little bit more because you're going to wear it, not just on the trail, but you're going to wear it in your life. And you're going to love it so much, you're going to tell other people. So buy pieces with confidence that you know and you, you can talk to people about. You've seen that it performs. But know that when you're investing in a lot of that gear, that it's stuff that you can use in your life beyond the trail. Also know that the trail moments, as you get more confidence, that you can share with other people, it's not just about you. You may have a friend that needs some time with you in the backcountry. Even a state park is the place to go. So get gear that you can wear beyond the trail, especially apparel, but also know this isn't just about you. To the extent you're confident, you're competent, that's something you can bring to children around you, friends around you, and I have seen the difference it makes in a person's life to be in an incredible place when they're going through a difficult time. You might be the person that brings them there. I think that's really powerful. I think that that obviously resonates with me and, and what we're trying to do here at Upper Vitals, but I think it, it can resonate with a lot of people. We, we put on a challenge this last summer called the, uh, live ultra or the live, live ultra light member 100 challenge or yeah. some version of that. Uh, <laughs> there's a hundred mile challenge. And there was, I think that the most powerful posts I saw were the people that, that just said, you know, that they took other people with yes. them and, yes. And the experiences that came out of that um, for, for some of these people were just completely life changing. And that's, I think that's where I get a lot of purpose out of doing what I do here. And I think that's, that's a benefit that a lot of people don't maybe think about when they're just thinking about getting themselves outdoors. But, you know, think about the people around you, maybe by you investing in the knowledge or the gear, um, you're going to be able to, to change other people's lives as well. Um, I, I, we talked about this a little bit yesterday on trail too, just, with technology, with, with the amount of connection we have to technology and, and everything hitting so, so fast all the time, um, you know, getting outdoors and, and having that opportunity to change perspective is kind of the yin to that yang. It helps balance out life. And there's a lot of people who need that, that maybe don't even recognize right. that. Um, I know that I've had a lot of experiences in my life where, you know, you, you decide to, to change something and you realize, holy cow, I didn't even realize I was you know, under these additional layers, or I was doing this, this thing mentally that, that was a burden on me, um, until I was able to, to get outside and change my perspective, slow life down. And, uh, I, I, I think that that's, that, that's a very interesting and very, um, intelligent thing to point out is that, that we can help others as we much can as help we help others. ourselves. We were talking about a project, uh, together here around really lightening the burden for people in their lives on trail and off. Jason, you've spoke so well to that. And it's really hard. I think if you can picture just right now, the people in your life, just second ring, first ring in, I would nearly guarantee that the people that are watching this have a person or two in their life that they know is struggling. And if you can imagine, if you're a backpacker right now, if you can imagine even taking them half a mile or a mile beyond the trailhead and to stand by a waterfall, and there's a lot of trails you can do that, easy overnight trips even to start, where you're by a waterfall, you're seeing a sunrise, the power in their lives to bring hope, to see life beyond their struggle of their day, whether it's a relationship or a physical struggle, a financial struggle, there is so much there that is so close at hand. If you're prepared, you can bring people into that. And also, I just want to encourage you, 
If you are struggling today, we're not here as therapists, but I know that being out there made a difference for me just in the last couple of days. Yeah. You, you, you can't get enough of it, really. <laughs> you, <can't. laughs> you know. Um, well, it's been a pleasure to have you out Thank here. You. It's been a lot of fun to get to know you. Um, so just one more time, it, where can people find you and, and continue to hear your thoughts on, on in, gear and, and life? Investmentgradegear.com. And what you see there is results of 50 years of experience. But, you know, there's also room to learn more. And that's what the last couple of days have been about. So thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's been a pleasure having right. you on here. Really appreciate it. For all of you guys listening, I uh, appreciate you guys listening to this podcast. If you haven't subscribed, make sure to subscribe. Rank and review the podcast. That helps us get seen and help more people out there trying to disconnect and, and gain more perspective in their life. We really appreciate you guys writing those reviews and sharing this podcast around. With that, we'll uh, see you on the next episode.